Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering the age old question of whether an iPad Pro with Apple Pencil can really replace a MacBook Pro or equivalent laptop. And because I'm a fan of upfront conclusions, I'm just gonna tell you what I think right now. And that is your iPad probably can't replace your laptop. I can see why you'd want to. I can see why it's a romanticized notion of an iPad replacing a laptop, but unfortunately we're not yet at the point where an iPad can feasibly replace a laptop. So if that's all you wanted to hear, then that's fantastic. Could you drop a like on the video and then you can uh, click away and do something more interesting with your time. But for the rest of the video, I'm gonna be elaborating on this point a little further and explaining exactly why I don't think an iPad can really truly replace a MacBook. So as usual, the structure of the video is gonna appear alongside there uh, in front of my Cambridge degrees that I've artistically mounted on the wall. I don't know if you noticed. And also in the video description, so you can click to the timestamps. But before we go forward, I just wanna say that this video is very kindly sponsored by Uni Days, who are a fantastic company for getting student discounts. I have saved about 300 pounds on this MacBook, about 150 pounds on this iPad. I save a fiver every month on my Spotify premium membership. With Uni Days, they just verify your student status using your email, it's free, you get a free app. And yeah, you might as well give it a go. If you're a student, you just save loads of money on loads and loads of different brands in pretty much every country in the world. Okay, so structure of this video, I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about why you might think that an iPad might wanna replace your laptop and the few cases in which it is good to have an iPad instead of a laptop. But then I'm gonna spend the bulk of the video talking through various use cases that I found when I tried to this out for myself, where like an iPad can sort of do what a laptop can, but it's just such a pain in the bum. And I think that's kind of the story of this whole debate that you, you maybe sort of can sort of replace your laptop with your iPad, but it would be such an annoyance for a lot of things that you wanna do that it's probably not worth doing. Okay, so why might you want to replace your laptop with an iPad? I can see why you'd wanna do that. Maybe you watched my previous video about how I take notes on my iPad Pro and you were inspired to suddenly start handwriting all your notes and taking notes. And, that, and that's absolutely fantastic. And maybe you realized that, oh, I kinda of want a MacBook Pro and those start at about 1500 pounds these days. That's a lot of money. Or maybe you've decided that, yeah, occasionally if you do have to type up essays or whatever in class, you can just get the uh, Apple keyboard attachment for the, for the iPad then you can type up whatever you want. And if you're just using your computer to browse YouTube and Netflix and Facebook and stuff, that works perfectly fine on an iPad. So if you're just doing those things like writing a few assignments, making notes in class and watching multimedia, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That you want to replace your, your laptop with, with an iPad. But unfortunately, I don't think that's quite the full story. And now I'm just gonna talk about various instances in which you would be glad that you had a laptop instead of an iPad. Firstly, let's talk about general efficiency at using a device. Now, an iPad and a MacBook and any kind of device, these are all just tools for your own creativity, for your own tasks. So if you're a student, you probably have to write an essay or do some kind of assignment or something along those lines. And in my opinion, the device that gets that done the fastest is the device that you wanna have. Because as a student, and especially if you're at university where there's loads of stuff going on, you don't wanna be spending a lot of time doing work. You wanna be spending that time doing more interesting things with your time instead. And if we're talking about general efficiency, then the iPad is not a very efficient device. The touch navigation thing is cool, but is it's objectively slower than navigating using a keyboard on a MacBook. So let's say you wanna open a web address. In the iPad, you'd have to swipe up from the bottom to get the dog, you'd have to click on Safari, and then you'd have to click on the little address bar, and then you'd have to type it in the keyboard what your you know, URL is. But if you have a MacBook and you're using it to its full potential by using stuff like Spotlight and Alfred and things that help with keyboard navigation, then pretty much whatever you're thinking that you wanna do on a computer can just be done that little bit faster on a MacBook rather than on an iPad. And I tried this out for a few days. I genuinely tried replacing my MacBook with an iPad, you know, just for standard student stuff. And I found that while it was possible, I was getting frustrated with how slow the whole process was. Because for me, I'm very used to, you know, as soon as I have a thought of something that I wanna do on a computer, I want that action to be done as quickly as possible. And with a fast typing speed and something like Alfred or Spotlight, you can do that. But with an iPad, you're kind of a bit encumbered by, by the software and by just the general touch interface of the iPad. So that was point number one. General efficiency on an iPad is just a little bit reduced compared to a MacBook, which is why I find it a bit annoying using an iPad for long extended periods of time. Secondly, let's talk about writing essays, and especially if you're writing any kind of essay or long assignment that requires references. Finding good reference software and integrating it within a word processor on the iPad is a lot more of a pain in the bum than it is on a MacBook or on a Windows laptop. On a MacBook or Windows laptop, you've got stuff like EndNote and Mendeley, I use Mendeley personally, and it just works nicely. You've got a Microsoft Word plugin and you know you sort out your references. Everyone knows how to use Mendeley, you know, it's just like a standard thing. And if you pass that document on to other friends who also likely have Mendeley and Microsoft Word, then they can add references to it. And there have been quite a few occasions in my time in med school where I've collaborated with friends on different papers 
And it's been so useful, all of us having Microsoft Word with the Mendeley plugin so that our references stuff didn't get screwed up. And that would just be a lot more of a pain in the bum on the iPad compared to the MacBook Pro. So if you're writing any sort of essays with references, you'll be glad in the long run that you have a laptop instead of just an iPad. Thirdly, what if you want to print something? And yeah, I know it's 2018, who prints anything these days? But even someone like me who's gone completely paperless and you know, I, I, I glorify myself because I've gone completely paperless and love the fact that I've gone completely paperless. I still have to print stuff very occasionally. There's stuff like travel expense forms when claiming money back from the university for traveling to my medical school placement. Or occasionally you do have to print something off and hand sign it for some very odd reason. And printing stuff from an iPad is, it's possible, but again, it's just a story. It's a bit more of a pain. Um, you can always email it to a friend and ask them to print it. You could use, you know, HP AirPrint or Apple AirPrint, but really who has an AirPrint enabled printer these days where it actually works and actually connects to the Wi-Fi? With a laptop, you know that if your printer is being completely screwed, all you have to do is just plug the USB cable into the laptop and you know you'll reliably be able to print something out. So again, if you want to print stuff, having, having a MacBook just makes it a bit more of a pleasant experience than having to struggle with the interface of an iPad. What about presentations? Presentations are really common, like depending on what sort of degree you're doing, what sort of school you're at, chances are you're gonna have to do some kind of PowerPoint or keynote presentation at some point. And again, like while it is possible to create PowerPoints and keynote presentations on an iPad, it's just a bit more of a pain than it is creating it on a MacBook. It's so much faster doing it on a laptop. We're all used to the interface of doing it on a laptop. We know where the buttons are, we know how things work. And if we're handing it off to someone, they'll know how it works. Doing it on an iPad is possible, but it takes more time and therefore, Whenever I've had to make a presentation and I've been on the go, I've kind of started off with my iPad, I've used Keynote on my iPad. I've, you know, at one point I was running a teaching session for some of the students in the year below. And I, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna be one of those people that just uses my iPad to make this presentation. I'll connect it up to the projector and just navigate with my iPad. And after about five minutes of struggling with Keynote uh, to try and make this presentation, I just gave up. I decided to just go home, get my MacBook out and do this properly. It was a lot quicker, a lot more, a lot more efficient and just ultimately I was more productive and could do better things with my time because I had a laptop instead of just an iPad. Finally, let's talk about spreadsheets. Uh, spreadsheets are, again, a bit of a pain to navigate with the iPad. I use Google Sheets for lots of things. I use it for my active recall spreadsheets. I use it for spaced repetition. You can check out some of my videos about evidence-based study tips if you're into that sort of stuff. And although I can sort of use Google Sheets on an iPad, again, it's the same story. It's more of a pain. It's much easier just going on my MacBook, logging into Google Sheets, and then just being able to do stuff a lot faster. Let's say I need to put a formula, let's say I need conditional formatting, let's say I need to drag down formulae across cells. You, you can do all of that on an iPad, but again, it's just, it's just more cumbersome, it's just more of a pain. If you try and just use an iPad instead of a, instead of a laptop, you find a lot of these little things, like in theory, it seems like a very reasonable thing. Like if you're a student, you wanna handwrite your notes, all you're doing is watching Netflix. It seems reasonable to think, that, whoa, why don't I just, you know, replace my laptop with my with my iPad, it's easier to carry around, it makes me feel a bit more hipster and edgy that I'm just using an iPad Pro with Apple Pencil. I would have thought that until I tried it and realized that actually, unfortunately, we're still not at the point where an iPad can fully replace a laptop. So having said all that, I still absolutely love my iPad Pro. I use it every single day. I use it at work for my to-do list. I use it whenever I'm drafting a YouTube video. I use it whenever I wanna take notes on anything. But essentially, for the most part, I'm using my iPad as a glorified piece of paper. And a glorified piece of paper is not the only device that you wanna have on your person. If you really are in that position where you're choosing between an iPad and a laptop, you should definitely go for the laptop. Those are just my two cents. So uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. We've talked about why I think a laptop cannot replace an iPad. Uh, I hope I've given you some kind of opinionated framework to, to decide this. If you wanna give it a go, then by all means, give it a go. Um, and let me know how it goes in the comments. And maybe in a few years time when, you know, maybe tablets get more advanced or if I ever decide to switch over to the Microsoft ecosystem, God forbid, and start using a Surface, which is like a hybrid laptop and, and tablet, then maybe I'll make another video readdressing this point. But I have recently tried to use my iPad instead of my MacBook and I find myself going back to the MacBook always and just using the iPad as a glorified piece of paper. So thank you very much for watching and thanks again to UniDays for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.